Silo was an electronics retailer that operated throughout the United States from 1947 until 1995. Welcome to Eric C Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified of my latest video that are posted during the week. Be sure to hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that video in a future posting. Thanks for watching and now back to the program. Slashes prices to the bone. These are trained professionals. Do not attempt to do this in your own home. It's silos, everything on sale, sale. Want to come? My feet are nailed to the boardwalk. Then what's on your hands? And say big in every department. Thank you, Jerry. That was fun. You want fun? We put every brand name TV, audio component, and appliance on sale for fun. <laughs> Laugh in our face Sunday through Wednesday. Afterwards, drink plenty of fluid. At silos, four day, everything on sale, sale. No clip on ties without written permission. Silo was founded by Sidney Cooper in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1946. Cooper saved $1,200 from his army service. He used $600 to buy used Ford from his father and the other $600 he invested in housewares that he could fit in the trunk of the Ford. In 1950, he saw his first TV and envisioned televisions as the future. Televisions, however, wouldn't fit into a car trunk. So instead, he opened a small store called Silo Discount Center. The company was named for himself and his wife Lorraine, combining the first two letters of each name. Cooper also distinguished Silo from its department store competition by aggressively advertising discounting and defied local blue laws by opening on Sundays. Cooper, a natural showman, was actually arrested but had arranged in advance for the press to be present, declaring, we will always be open on Sunday so we can bring our better values to hardworking people on the only day they are free from work to take advantage of it. Silo owned the back page of Philadelphia's top dailies, the Inquirer and the Bulletin for 30 years. These ads touted the S in Silo stood for savings, service, selection, and satisfaction. Silo went public in 1962 to raise money for both regional and national expansion. In 1970, Silo made its first foray beyond the Philadelphia metro area, purchasing a number of downing stores from Sam Bloom in Denver, Colorado. Shortly after, Silo purchased three appliance TV city stores in Arizona from its founder, Jay Winslow. The Colorado and Arizona acquisitions enjoyed rapid expansion as Silo applied its formula of low pricing, huge selection, and aggressive advertising. In 1972, Silo launched Audio World, a wholly owned subsidiary that sold audio equipment. Silo stores also started to grow from 8,000 square foot stores to 25,000 square foot warehouse showrooms, even a 60,000 square foot warehouse outlet in Buffalo, New York, and New Orleans. Initially a few freestanding stores in the greater Philadelphia area, by 1974 Audio World departments were being incorporated into all existing and new silo stores with the concept proved successful. The audio expansion came at the expense of small appliances whose profit margin had disappeared for silo. Silo thereafter concentrated on retailing only large appliances along with the new audio and TV sections, as was branded as Silo Audio World for a number of years. In 1976, Cooper died at the age of 57, and at that time, Silo operated 40 stores with revenues of over $60 million. Silo was acquired by Cyclops Steel, a Pittsburgh-based specialty steelmaker in February of 1980. Cyclops had decided to diversify outside of the steel business and had already made one retail acquisition, the Busy Beaver Home Store chain in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Cyclops was willing to bet aggressively on Feinberg's strategy of attacking new markets with multiple simultaneous store openings, accompanied by a massive advertising blitz, all under the Silo brand. 
Silo expanded rapidly and coast to coast over the next several years. Cyclops ultimately sold the retailer to Dixon's Group PLC, a Great Britain-based firm in 1987. Cyclops' investment was quite successful, returning more than 10 times its original investment in just 7 years. At its peak, Silo operated 232 stores throughout the United States. In 1993, Dixon's decided to throw in the towel on its investment and sold a controlling stake in Silo for $45 million to Fredder Inc. At the time of the purchase, Silo featured 183 stores that were due to stiff competition from retailers as Circuit City and Best Buy faced dwindling sales. The Fredder stores were facing similar competition and Fredder management hoped that the combination would create a retail's electronics powerhouse better suited to take on these up and coming companies. Fredder was faced with integrating a chain with both dwindling market share and outdated and aging inventory. One way Fredder dealt with this challenge was to convert several of the silo stores into outlet-based units to sell off excess inventory. Declining market shares, lingering debt from the acquisition, and outdated store format eventually doomed Fredder to failure. The company began to exit its markets quickly and quietly, and customers and employees would sometimes find the stores suddenly closed during normal business hours. Silo's seven Pittsburgh area stores, for example, were precipitously closed when employees received word that they were to pack all remaining inventory and close that store that day. The store manager reportedly went to the press with the information. This resulted in a mob of customers flocking to the Pittsburgh stores to demand goods left on layaway or return of their deposits. Silo reopened the doors for three days to accommodate these customers. The acquisition, assumption of Silo's debt, and lack of liquid assets led Fredder Inc. into Chapter 11 bankruptcy, forcing the chain to close many locations. All Silo Electronics stores closed by 1995, with all Fredder locations closing by May of 1996. Here's a special announcement from Silo. We're closing our doors in Peoria and Bloomington forever. But before we do, we must sell every item in the store. That means a huge liquidation sale. Silo is letting everything go at drastically reduced prices. Top brand VCRs, TVs, camcorders, audio, appliances, and home office equipment. We must sell our entire stock. So come in and save before we close our doors forever. Don't miss Silo's huge liquidation sale. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.